I'm back. I never was gone away for long, was I? You can't kick a girl when she's down. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition. Here on this channel, it's all about fragrances. It's all about perfumes. And if you're looking for just another fragrance review, you've clicked onto the wrong channel. But if you've clicked onto some sort of madness, some sort of weirdness, some sort of... <sighs> whatever, then you've clicked onto the right channel. So in today's video, it's all about Serge Lutin's fragrances with my trusty friend Claude here, my cup of tea, and an itchy nose as I start. As always, you know me, no fakery here. It's all just jiggery pokery. So in today's video, Serge Lutin's. Now, if you're thinking, oh my God, I want to know all about the history of him. I want to know all about everything about it, then it's not going to be that. It's just going to be about the perfumes that I love from his collection and why I think you need them in your collection if you are a perfume collector like me and you wear your perfumes like me and you love your perfumes like me, then you'll need these. Call me an, an enabler. I'm not enabling you to do anything. I'm just telling you what my opinion is. And on this channel, it's my opinion that matters. Well, it's your opinion that matters as well. I do like to see other people's opinions. We might not agree. We might disagree. But then that's what being respectful is about. That's what it's all about. Just let's jump into it while I have another sip of tea. And I'll come back in a moment after the sirens have collected me. So I'm back. Yes, they released me. They thought, yes, let's just release her on good behaviour. Let's release her back to the public where she belongs. So the first perfume I'm going to talk about, I'm going to do it, I think, in chronological order. My very first one that I purchased, which is this little baby here. This is Baptême du Feu. This is what started it all. This was the very first Serge Luton's fragrance I picked. Now, I love all of my perfumes. This is the only one really that bothers me slightly. And I really like animalic perfumes because this has got a castorium note. Castorium is a synthetic note. It's a synthetic animalic note taken from beaver's juice. Yes, beaver's juice. Yes. Then combined with all of those lovely fruits and florals and... It has this slight like, gingerbread note in it as well. Baptism of fire is what it translates as. I'm addicted to it. I love it. There's something about it I do love. But there's something about it in it that just slightly bothers me. But I'm okay with that. I am, I'm okay with that. It's like going into a room and there's that awkward silence, that awkward moment when people just look at you and think, oh my God, she's here again. Yes, this is what this perfume does to me, but I absolutely love it. Baptême du Feu, the very first one I bought, I haven't used a lot of it. I don't intend to declutter it because I do wear it when I feel... I want something that's just a little bit different, a little bit edgy. Serge Luton's fragrances are a little bit edgy. In this collection, they are, really, apart from two that I've got that I'm going to talk about, which I think maybe are safe blind buys. The rest are not, really. But um, Baptême du Feu, the very first one. Now, the next one is Fils de Joie, which is a night-blooming jasmine perfume which I first sampled from Chantelle Tiffany, who sent me a little sample. She, her reaction was not sure. I don't think she was really absolutely sure about it, but then it grew as a big, big love for her. When I first smelt this, this was an instant like, 
the jasmine in this, you do have to like jasmine. It's backed up with honey and it's syrupy. And it's it reminds me of walking, as I've said before, in a Greek island on a warm night and you can smell the night blooming jasmine in the air. The indoles of it, as it's blooming, it's just becoming slightly <sighs> decaying from the florals. But I love wearing it. It's not a safe blind buy. You do need to sample it. If you do blind buy it at your risk, but that's up to you if you want to. We all make decisions. We've all made compulsive decisions. But this was a really good decision. I'm glad I bought it. Um, others have bought it in Fragcom and have mentioned me personally for it. So I do thank you for that. Um, so Feast de Joie, a very dark, vampiric, gothic jasmine perfume, which I absolutely adore. The next one needs no introduction. I've gone a little bit less crazy on it. I've only had this about nine months, eight, eight months. And in the first month, I'd literally used about that much. It is a fleur d'oranger. It, what can I say about it? I've talked about it a lot. It is orange blossom, hibiscus rose. It is probably my all-time favourite Serge Gautin's fragrance. Um, a lot of compliments. Signature scent worthy, in my opinion. Backed up with a bit of that cumin note. Cumin is used as a spicy fragrance in cookery and it gives it an edge, it gives it a very, very slight edge. I think it would be 50-50, it would be divided. You're either going to love this or you're going to hate it. Um, yeah, it's pretty, but it's edgy and it's stunning. Backup bottles, as you know, I've got Fleur d'Oranger Orange Blossom by Serge Lutens. This next one is the Queen of... Dark tuberose perfumery. I mean, look at that. Look at that ribbed to it. I love that bit of ribbing. I just do. I just think it makes the bottle. It just... What girl doesn't like a bit of ribbing? Is that what it's called? Ribbing? A rib? A dent? A... Yeah. Yeah. But anyway... Back to the perfume, I'm going to spray this. This is, this is Alvira. This is Magda from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. This is Lily from the Munsters. This is Morticia from the Adams Family. Yeah, you, got the, you get the vibe. This is it. This is Tuberose pumped with gasoline running through its veins it's yes that's what it is because it has this fuel like injection into it this is definitely not worthy of a blind you if you want to blind buy this go ahead this isn't a cheap perfume by no means However, it's a perfume when it makes a statement, when it means business. It is so dark and deep and mysterious and enveloping that I would say it's probably one of the most darkest perfumes in my wardrobe of fragrances. And I have a lot. I have probably about 10 I can count or five I can count on one hand that are in this category. And this is one of them. This is, this definitely isn't Janet from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's Magda or it is Tim Curry himself wearing this as the elevator pulls up. And Janet and her beau come out of the elevator and there he is with his heels singing that sweet transsexual transvestite from Transylvania. This is that and more.
This is a masterpiece of a creation and I absolutely adore it. Cuberez, criminal, par Serge Lutens. It is criminal. Right, we've come to the halfway mark. Let's talk about the next one, which is in a completely opposite vein. You couldn't get further opposite, diametrically opposed, if you could. And it is La Dompteuse en Cage, which you can see I put a fair dent in this. This is a beautiful, sweet frangipani scent. Now, the first four I've talked about, insane projection, insane longevity. This one is more demure. This one is more... This will not make a statement unless you overspray it and you're spraying literally about 15 to 20 sprays of it. This is... It's sunny and sweet. Now, the frangipani in this, I would say... I don't know if you can hear one of my cats here. I don't know if you can... Electra. Yes, darling. That's a good girl. Um, this frangipani flower, it, it's upbeat and happy. And it has such a sweetness to it, a candy-like sweetness to it. Reminds me of those Mentos or Mentos sweets, the pink ones. It's exactly like that. If you like that kind of smell and that kind of texture and feel and taste, you will love this. It is office appropriate, I would say. It's more of a safer blind by this and one of the others, I will say, maybe is one of a safer blind by. Um, but as I say, it's not the best longevity. Four hours on my skin. And at, at best, arm's length projection, and then more of a skin scent. But it's nice, it's comforting, and I adore it. La Dumte en Cage by Serge Lutin. The next one is more austere, as I say. It's one of my austere scents. One of my scents that I said a princess could wear, which I did in a princess video. And it is La Vierge de Fer by Serge Lutin. This is lily and pear, and it is metallic and by metallic i mean when you're drinking something you get that taste of metallicness in your mouth after you're drinking maybe some champagne and you lick your lips and it has that aftertaste this is what this perfume emits to me it, it's fizziness from the pear it's like a pear sorbet mixed with some lilies that are drenched in champagne and i adore it it's it's pretty. I would say it's a better alternative to um, Pure Poison by Dior, if you're looking for this that. It has insane projection, for, I would say, for the first hour. And then after that, it does sit closer to the skin. Um, it Again, it is moderate longevity, moderate projection after that, um, unless you overspray. But... I love this iced pear sorbet feeling mixed with waxiness of the lilies, mixed with this metallic champagne feel. And it is magical. La Vierge de Fer by Serge Lutens. Two left to go. So the next one, this one was gifted to me by Serena, a subscriber of mine. This is Santal Majuscule. Now, this one. I'm reserving for autumn and winter because I only got this recently in the last couple of months. So when I did wear it just a little bit in the summer, this to me is a seasonal perfume. And I don't normally wear perfumes seasonally, but this cocoa note, this chocolatey rose and sandalwood, I love the sandalwood in this is, in my opinion, insane. Absolutely. However, I don't know what's going to be like in winter, but the longevity of this wasn't the best on my skin. So who knows? Maybe in winter it might be. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not ranking any of these perfumes because I love them all. Um, but I'm glad I have it. 
because I'm not sure if I would have bought it, if I'm being completely honest. But it's still a big love for me, this perfume. I would say this is going to be good in wintertime when it you want some coziness, but you want a perfume that has layers of depth to it, layers of different facets. All Serge Luton's fragrances, they kind of develop on the skin and they all evolve. They don't really, they're not really linear, these perfumes, I would say, in my opinion. Um, but yes, yeah, Santal Majuscule, Come winter, I will do a full review on this like I have done with my previous ones. And the last one is Nuit de Cellophane, the most recent perfume to the Fragrantitions family. I have already sprayed this on my skin. This is a beautiful Osmanthus, that Asian yellow floral. It has a tea-like quality to it. It's sunny, uplifting, it's beautiful, it's, it portrays that bouquet of florals that you open with the cellophane and you feel that textural cellophane and it has, to me though, although Osmanthus is a yellow floral, I picture purple florals as well. This is what I picture, I picture all of the floral, flo oh, oh, oh. yes I know Claude, yes I know, I know, I know. Don't disturb an artist when she's in flow. This is a this is a true bouquet, but it has a fruitiness to it as well. So if you don't like florals, you may well like this because this the Osmanthus has this almost tart fruitiness to it, which I adore. Now, the longevity is only about four hours on my skin and the projection, I would say, is quite good in the first one to two hours and then it sits closer to a skin scent. But it's good for an everyday perfume. This and, what was the other one? La Dompteuse en Cage. They'd probably be the two safest ones to purchase if you were going to blind buy, in my opinion. However, the rest I wouldn't. But this... Now, some people say this has a slight conditioner effect smell to it or a slight shampooy effect smell to it. To me, it has a perfumey smell to it. That That's true, but the fruitiness of that Osmanthus, I just wish the Osmanthus was more, a bit more pronounced, but that's okay because it still dries down to this beautiful, comforting it's almost chiffon like you know that the texture of chiffon it dries down to this beautiful what i would call ballerina lace style you know me i'm i talk more about effects that perfume makes me feel rather than notes in perfumery this is how i like to describe perfumery this to me is what perfume makes me feel how I am for the day, and if I'm in a real bad mood, sometimes it just grounds me. This is one of those that does that. This would be an easy reach perfume. Beautiful, stunning, Nuit de Cellophane, a beautiful Osmanthus fruity floral. Let's put my teeth back in. Nuit de Cellophane, a beautiful fruity floral perfume that gives a kick in your step. So that is my complete Serge Luton's fragrance. There is one on my wish list, but I'm not sure if I'm going to blind buy it. I would need to sample it first. That's Chegui or Chegui. Chegui. Have you tried that one? Would I like it? Would I not? Comment down below. But until next time, always remember, start the day with a smile. And if somebody if somebody is rude to you, just pause, look at them in the eye and just say, are you having a bad day? Till the next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.